Hi, I'm Carrie Murphy, and welcome to Spotlight, where we showcase incredible entrepreneurs and their stories. There's few things people love more than their animals. They become our family members, our best friends, and although we communicate with them every day, can you really make a living off animal communication? <laughs> well, I have a guest here today who says yes. She is a best-selling author, speaker, and an animal communication expert for over 25 years. Please welcome Joan Ranquet. Joan, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. You really talk to animals. Every day. <laughs> and you make a living off of talking to animals. For 25 years. That's amazing. And you've trained literally thousands of other people to build businesses doing the same thing. Yes. So you didn't come out to LA wanting to be an animal communication expert or having this business. Tell us a little bit about how you got started. Well, um, I got started, I was in the film business and I had a horse who I really felt like was my kind of, she was my best friend and she was somewhat of a, almost like a spiritual mirror, like everything I was working on in my life she really sort of represented when I was out in the arena with her, and so... As so many animals do, I yes. feel like. They are such a spiritual reflection. Yeah. Yeah. At some point, I bred her, and be before that, though, I had been using animal communicators just for fun, and after I would have the communicator out, and this is dating me way back, so... <laughs> um, I would feel such a deep connection that I didn't know kind of how else to replicate it except to get into that space. And so in getting into that space, I felt that I was soon connecting and communicating on that level with her. And eventually I, I bred her and I lost her the night of the birth um, she colicked. Actually, I lost her later. We had a surgery and she was in ICU. But then I was, I had this orphan cult, and so suddenly I found myself in that same state of connecting with someone who, you know, was pretty helpless and dependent on me. Sure. I mean, that's a big responsibility, too, it taking care of an orphan cult, I big think. Big responsibility. Yeah. And so, anyway, through uh, experiences like that, I, I found, you know, that I could do it, and then I eventually studied and then I studied more stuff. I kept um, learning body work and all sorts of energy healing techniques. And so now I have a school to teach people how to communicate with animals and or do energy healing with animals. I just find that so fascinating because most people might say animal communication. That's a little woo-woo. But anyone who has a pet or an animal knows that you communicate with them all the time. All day. Everything we do. You know... When animals in the wild, they're communicating through telepathy, which is the transference of pictures, words, and feelings. And we forget mm -hmm. that in a herd, if someone feels fear over here, the whole herd feels it. They're all in that state with yeah. each other all the time. And that's what our households are like. Isn't that the truth? Yes. Yeah, we all feel <laughs> Everything. each other, right? Yes. I have a toddler. I know that yes. well. <laughs> I know that well. So you've done TED Talks. You've written two books. You have a book with Hay House. When people come to you, Joan, like how do you help them understand animal communication, energy healing, and actually create a business around this love for animals? So it starts with a love of animals, just obviously. And um, a lot of the people that come to me that want to learn to be animal communicators, they've often um, felt like they've connected with animals their whole lives. Maybe they didn't feel like they could talk about it with other people. So the first thing I do is create a really safe space for people to be able to learn and to be able to work with animals. And so because you've said in the past when we've talked, like people who want to be animal communicators, like feel like they might be a little crazy. Right? Yeah. Like, well, we're a little weird. Right. Yeah. You're a little weird. <laughs> and it's fine. Yeah. We'll have a great club <laughs> of other weirdos. And oh. so anyway, um, the uh, so I I literally have the step by step process for animal communication, and then the same with the energy healing, and then the third track is getting your business off the ground and. I have some really simple things that I do with people because, you know, they've got to be able to get known in their local community, but they also have to have an internet presence. So it's sort of a, a, a good, healthy marriage of both. Right, right. Now, you lost your sister, like, quite some time ago. I know that kind of opened up the door for you as well because when you have a loss, 
you usually try to find something that fills it. Absolutely. So I tell have, us, yeah, tell us a little yeah. bit about that. My sister died when I was um, 24. She was 21. She had a brain tumor. Mm. And um, it, it really, the first thing I did, and I, I still can't believe this, I was living in New York City. I went down to NYU, had a, um, a library for alternative medicine. And it was literally at that point about this big because it was a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, uh, this little space where they had a lot of information on you know, visualizing vitamins, things like that. And, and no one was talking about that then. And it's pre actually very interesting. So um, I came home from New York City to Seattle with a pile of books and told my family, you know, we can, we can do this. And they were all like, Joan, okay, you know, this is called denial. <laughs> and, um, so anyway, that stack of books sat and, and got a lot of dust. And my sister died. And I never lost faith in the process of energy healing. I just thought, or, you know, alternative medicine, I just thought, okay, it wasn't meant to be here. And then two years later, my other sister was diagnosed with AIDS, and those same books wow. came out from off the shelf. And that wasn't necessarily what, what has kept her alive, although in part it has. Um, but, yeah, I had a lot of bad diagnoses for a few years there, and... Um, went through quite a bit, but my love for healing and health and all things related to that never, never went away. Yeah. So you must love what you get to do every day. I love what I get to yeah, do every day. Yeah, I really feel that from you. And as yeah. someone who's, I mean, really one of the most respected women in this industry, and you have, you know, again, you have these best-selling books, and you do TED Talks, Joan. What has been, because Spotlight is really about showcasing entrepreneurs and their story. So tell mm -hmm. us, what have been some of the challenges that you've overcome in your journey as an entrepreneur? Well, I remember in the 90s telling my dad what I was doing. And at the time, he, when he was still alive, he was a lawyer. Very smart, <laughs> very funny. And he said, and he's going, what are you yeah. doing? <laughs> he's like, I, I just don't doing? think I understand. But meanwhile, he was like truly an animal communicator. So... Probably in 1997, I ended up on TV talking to uh, a baby elephant at a zoo, and um, I went I went back to Seattle and I showed my parents this this piece, and they ended up saying, my dad pulled me aside and he said, I don't care what anybody tells you, you got this from my side of the family. <laughs> I'm now taking ownership, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> so that was um, having my dad. You know, embrace Validate it. That. Yeah, 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 was really a big thing. And I would say that you know some of the bigger challenges have been. I mean, I started this program during the worst recession, right? I start. I mean, I was teaching around the country. Well, that was a challenge too. I was teaching all over the country, probably late nineties, two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand two, and my mom was diagnosed with cancer, and so. My I couldn't get back to people like in Bozeman, Montana, or Steamboat, Colorado, or all these fun places where I was teaching. And um, so I started thinking about the whole online component of like, if I kept people on, I talk to animals on the phone every day, why don't I just have students, you know, right. get them on the phone like that? So, um, you and know, now everything's online. Like that was so smart online. back then yeah. because you're going, how do I reach more people? Yeah. Because you're right, life happens, we can't all travel, we're busy, and so you have very successful online programs that people take from all over the world. Yeah. Yeah, I'd that's amazing. I have people from Dubai in my classes and in India, <laughs> and yeah, it's that's fun. That's just awesome, Joan. Yeah. And, and now, I, you also travel, though. I travel You take people a lot. on trips. So this is great. You get to communicate with animals, you get to teach people, and then you take these amazing trips around the world to be with animals. So tell us a little bit about those adventures. Yeah, I actually just, it actually moves me to hear someone say that out loud, right? Because <laughs> I'm going to Borneo tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I am, well, I feel like there's three things that, you know, they always say, what keeps you up at night? Three things really keep me up at night. One is the genocide in shelters, right? Mm -hmm. Like our human responsibility, we don't take responsibility for animals, so all these animals get dumped in the shelter and then we have to euthanize them, right? The other thing that bugs me is factory farming, and I can't do a lot about that except not participate in it. But right. the third one that really just sends me over the edge is the poaching and the fact that our endangered species, they're going to go away. Right. And so I'm committed to taking people to endangered species two to three times a year because 
When you get to see a cheetah in the wild and you think about the fact that that's one of the most endangered species on the planet and that, you know, the human wildlife conflict is, is uh, part of the, the biggest part of the problem. And we have the same problem here with, you know, if you look at Yellowstone and the wolves. Um, but if I can get people to these animals, have them experience them, and I mean close up, like right. cheetahs. Cheetahs trying to get into the jeeps. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want that. Oh <laughs> like, no, you it's, stay away. <laughs> so cute, though. I mean, and cheetahs have never. Cheetahs don't kill humans, so it's actually okay. Good to know. Yeah, All right, cheetahs good. <laughs> actually have a whole um, history with humans of hunting with them. They used to get on the backs of the horses with the humans, and then they'd say, "Okay, off," and wow. off. Yeah, no, cheetahs are like. Just very large domestic cats. Right. I wish. But anyway, um, so if I can get people out there thinking about cheetahs and coming home and telling stories, that's that's my way of infiltrating. And ecotourism is known to have starting to have an effect in places like Africa. And I'm going tomorrow to Borneo, where the orangutans are, and where we're just like slashing and burning the rainforest so that we can have palm oil. And so I, if I can get people thinking about what our consumerism is doing, then maybe we can save some animals. Yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful cause. And it's great that you get to see these animals in their natural environment. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's amazing. Yeah. So for someone who's interested in exploring this world, mm -hmm. seeing what's possible, yeah. what would they do? What are the next steps? Um, they could come to one of my intensives, and I, I, ha I do still get around. Like, I teach in different, I teach in Virginia Beach at Edgar Casey twice a year. I teach in Boston, but, but really, they would go to my website. They might see where I'm going to be, and if I'm going to be near them, that would be great. But I also They can have, buy one of your books? They can buy one of my books, mm -hmm. um, and I also have um, a lot of online courses. So that's, I have an animal communication home study course, and I have an energy healing for animals home study course where they can learn tapping, EFT tapping, and um, um, other, just about the animal chakras, all sorts of behavioral things, and ways to help behavioral health challenges. Even if people go to horse shows or dog shows, I've got all sorts of calming techniques, things like that. Yeah, and you actually have some impressive animals that you've worked with over the years, right? I mean, tell yes. us a little bit about that. I know you don't talk about it very much, but... I've done some tapping on some horses that are um, famous, that have, uh, I've done the EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique Tapping, on some international horses, and I've, I'm not really supposed to talk about this at all, but I get behind <laughs> the scenes at a lot of zoos and talk to animals. Um, I've talked to orangutans, that's how I fell in love with them, Aww. and some gorillas. I've been to a lot of wildlife centers and helped people decide where, you know, maybe this hawk shouldn't be near this natural opponent in the wild. <laughs> Probably not so yeah, smart. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. So maybe that's why he's plucking all his feathers up, but what do I know? Right. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's, yeah. So I've gotten to be in kind of, I've gotten to be behind the scenes for a lot of things that I have to. Right. But how wonderful. What an amazing life and adventure that you lead. And for people who maybe they don't want to start a business, but they have animals and they want to be able to better communicate with their own animals, the online courses and the trainings yeah, can Yeah, and help even the books are a great start. Wonderful. So, Joan, tell us your website. How do they find you? My website is joanranquet.com. All right. And we will have the link here so they can go check it out. And, Joan, Thank you so much for sharing your story and for doing what you do. I know you've impacted thousands of lives and have helped a lot of animals along the way too. So thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching the Spotlight interview. If you are intrigued about animal communication, energy healing, different modalities in which you can communicate with your animals, or maybe you're ready to start that dream business you have always wanted, mm -hmm. again, check out joanranquette.com and share this video and your comments below because when you are inspired, you inspire others. Thank you so much for joining us today. And as always, remember to keep dreaming it, living it, and being it. Until next time.